Hello, I'm Chris. I just want to give everyone an update who's interested in the Stellara 4.5 inch imaging Newtonian because we've had a bit of a breakthrough with coma correctors. Up till now, the only one we've been able to get to reach focus is the very affordable Stella Lyra 99 pound, 99 F credit, GSO type coma corrector but that's got some chromatic aberration so the stars look a bit big and blobby and it doesn't correct fully over large sensors so okay for small sensors if you're just doing casual stuff but if you really look at the image quality of it it's not going to give you the best results so we're up in the air what to do with this little beast but it turns out that the very first coma corrector i tested i moved on too quickly from this this is the barda mpcc this is about 50, 60 pound more than that one. It's about 150, 160 earth credits. Now, how I had it before was my broadband light pollution filter, coma corrector, this nailed 37.5 mil adapter to give me the correct 55 mil backspacing. And this is how it would normally reach focus with most Newtonians. The coma corrector would sit just inside the, co the focuser and you have your spaces to your camera or you'd have a filter wheel or whatever there so i thought that should work it works with other newtonians that should work and i wrapped it in doing some testing the the draw tube from the focuser is covering part of the primary mirror which is going to cause artifacts and it wouldn't quite reach focus it needed some more travel after i tested this i tested the ts1 using that same adapter and it didn't reach focus so then we moved on to the Stella Lyra which worked but didn't give the best results or probably good enough results for most people's needs so once my colleague Rob got hold of this and uh, had a quick look he pointed out the obvious thing to me that well we could swap this node adapter out for a smooth adapter like you'd get with this 26 100 mm pro they've lent me to look at the correction over a larger size sensor so up to now i've been testing with a 533 camera which has got a smaller sensor they sent me this to have a look with a larger sensor comes with where are the adapters here we go comes with 21 mil m42 and a 16.5 m42 to m48 adapter if we screw those on there And that on there now, the coma corrector, maybe light pollution filter or whatever you've got on the front, broadband or narrowband filter. That will now go all the way in, allowing us to rack out to reach focus and actually reach his focus about there with the with the draw tube completely clear of that mirror. So that works. I think the Bard MPC, you'll look at the results in a moment. I think the Bard MPCC is the best compromise. Image quality sits somewhere between the TS, which is excellent, but I'll show you why that's a problem in a moment, and the Stella Lyra. It's a middle ground in terms of image quality. You may think, well, if the, if the TS GPU is better, why not use it? Well, that's because it's blooming long. So if we put, and that's going to cause a bit of a hazard, let's do it. I'll show you. It's a lot of screwing and unscrewing, but I think for the full visual effect, Let's just go for it. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm not going to put the, the filter on there. Now, look how long that is. And look how look how much distance we've got to play with. If we if we basically if we just slam that into the focuser, it's going to torpedo into that secondary mirror. No one wants that. It actually reaches focus. Let's get this in there. It reaches focus when it's about there. And the focus is probably about there. So you can see that's cutting off a bit of light to the primary mirror because the draw tube from the focus is blocking the light. Now, this coma corrector, the GPU, gives the tightest stars and it corrects really nicely over an APS-C size sensor, but then because of the size of the secondary mirror, we are getting some vignetting with larger sensors. So I think this this system's probably best up to like micro four thirds or cameras like the ZWO 533, 583, that kind of thing. It's an affordable 
imaging Newtonian, 299 Earth credits, and it's faster F4. Uh, I think, and we're actually realizing F4 with this BARD MPCC compared to the Stellar Lyra. That's going to be imaging at F4.4 because this is a 1.1 times. So you could have quite a fast imaging Newtonian F4 with a coma corrector for the total price of around, what would it be, 300 or 450-ish, that kind of price. So considering that, I think it's pretty good now, this. I'm going to show you the results in a moment on the computer, and we'll take a look at the images. OK, so we're now jumped onto the computer to have a look at the actual images. Now we can reach focus with more than one coma corrector and without the focus draw tube getting in front of that primary mirror at all. So we've got the BARD MPCC coma corrector on this image with the 2600 mm monochrome camera large APS-C size sensor now so at face value it's looking pretty good you can see at this scale that there is a little bit of warping in the corners but nothing unless you zoom in it looks pretty good there is vignetting over this size of sensor which is understandable I think if we zoom into 100% the stars are all looking pretty good I was able to focus the stars down to around about three arc seconds using the ASI, A, ASI Air focusing tool. If we have a look at the top right corner. Now we zoomed in 100%. You can see there is a bit of coma going on there. So it doesn't quite correct over an APS-C size sensor. But then again, the Bard Ram PCC isn't really aimed at a fast M4 imaging Newtonian. It works better at F5. Similar story in the bottom right and bottom left and top left there. Okay, so let's go in the middle again. More of a zoom into 200% just to have a final look at those center stars, but they are pretty looking pretty nice and round in the middle. So I think that's the best compromise. This is just one single 60 second sub exposure light frame. I then pop that into ASTAP to look at the Aberration Inspector and we can get a, a, just a all round view here of extreme zooms in of the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left and centres etc. That gives you a better idea, there's an all in one at a glance view of what's going on there. So the most affordable coma corrector now that we can see that that's cleared up the stars nicely now. At first glance at this image scale, that's looking pretty cracking actually. It's only when you zoom in, you see that the, the glass is not quite as good as the, um, let's go 100% let's go because that's fair, because that's what we viewed the other, other image at. You see that the stars are slightly elongated. Now that is not because of tracking errors because I was guiding at 0.5 arc seconds, which is way within the size of those stars. Those stars were measuring around about four arc seconds in the SIA when I was using the focusing tool. That's as tight as I could get them. If we look at the corners again, I think it's probably a little bit worse than the Barda. We look at all those four corners yeah especially that corner it's coma basically the center is looking pretty nice though if we zoom into 200 percent you can see it looks like tracking errors but when i was using a, a color camera the asi 585 I could see that there was lateral chromatic aberration where you'd have like a bit of red one side and a bit of green the other, or blue, I can't remember, um, and the actual star in the middle. So it was like a, a coloured ghost image of the star either side, typical of lateral chromatic aberration. And I think that's on the mono camera, you can't really see that as clearly. It's just kind of showing as, a, as an eggy oval star. So I don't think this is as good a choice as the Barda MPCC. But if you just view it at a normal image scale like that, it's looking pretty good actually. Like it's not bad considering the size of sensor it's trying to cover. If this was a smaller sensor, I think that would be 
passable if you want a budget imaging rig. Really budget. No, I think that's passable. Right, so now the the one that I thought was probably a bit risky but gives the best results is the TS GPU. And admittedly this star field doesn't have that many stars compared to where I was pointing previously. I was in uh, some major as you can see by the Bodes Bodes and Cigar Galaxy there. 60 second exposure again, these are all 60 second just single light frames. If we zoom in to 100%, we can see the stars are really pin sharp, about 200%. If we go in the corners, lovely, lovely corners with the TS GPU. It's just a shame that it's a bit risky with that one because you could just hit the secondary mirror and it focuses, reaches focus when that draw tube's quite far in. It's blocking some of that mirror. And we can see that if we zoom in to say 200%, maybe a bit further, 300%, just see that the stars have just got like a flat on them from that secondary mirror getting in the way. But if you want the ultimate image quality, that's the one to go for, but you've got to be really careful about how you set it up because of how long it is it will hit the secondary mirror if you just let it slip in the focus there so yeah the TS GPU does give the best results but it's risky let's just have a look at the aberration view for both the Stellar Lyra and the TS GPU as well while we're at it so this is the TS you can see at a glance using the ASTAP aberration inspector stars are lovely and round really good you look at the Stellar Lyra, which is a third of the price, you can see it's not quite as good. That's a line there. Basically, the stars are drawn into lines in that corner. Seagulls going on, and the stars are just a little bit eggy from the lateral chromatic aberration in the center. So, we're not getting them as, quite as tight. About half as tight, I'd reckon. I reckon. So, yeah, that, that's it really. I think the best compromise is the Barda. I think that does a pretty good job. I could focus the stars down for about three arc seconds. The stars are round in the middle. Um, it doesn't cover a large APS-C size sensor, but it'd be fine for micro four thirds, I think, or a five three three five eight five sensor, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I think if you just look at it overall, it's a really nice camera correct for the money. So I think that's the best compromise in my opinion. Okay, I realise it's been a long video, so thanks very much if you made it this far. As always, a big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all the support you give. Uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you've not done so already. Really appreciate it if you do, and I hope to see you guys and girls on the next video. Bye for now.